So this is my mom, Nelly. Yay, yay. <laughs> Say, welcome to the podcast. Welcome to my daughter, what? Podcast. 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 I know, podcast. That's a weird name. Hey, everybody. It's Lisa Alvarado. Thank you for tuning in to Find the Funny, another installment. Is that what you call it? Is it an I installment? So. Episode, no, no, episode, installment. installment. Uh, the that's journey a kind. of finding the funny. <laughs> that's a yeah. journey. That's such a bachelor term, mm-hmm. isn't it? The bachelor. Oh, I'm it? on my journey. Mm-hmm. This is my journey. Yeah. Anyway, welcome. I am so excited to have my guest today. It's Peter Berman. He's a fantastic comedian with a Comedy Central special and a friend, a dear friend for many years. And he also helped me, um, was one of the roundtable comedians on the documentary that I shot, which is called Don't Wait, The Michael Schmidt Story. Actually, when we renamed it, it's called um, The Funny Thing About Death because nobody knows Michael Schmidt, but they will once we sell it. <laughs> uh, anybody I've told about that experience, comedian or civilian, is uh, really intrigued by the whole situation. Yes. All of it. All the different layers of it. Yeah. And thank you for having me to uh, huh. Alvarado World Headquarters, the uh, I, studio. I know. This yeah, is thank like, you. if you guys could see this room, it's, it's I, I don't know, the it's side, a little don't, bit bigger don't, than don't, a bathroom. No, nah, but... <laughs> really, no, I love being here. Thank you. Yeah, really. I, I mean, this is this is Hollywood, right? This yeah. is not like how you do it. Like you put a you put a sheet behind you. <laughs> you try Dude, to get some wrinkles on, about. some lights. This and, place uh, is fantastic. I don't know yeah, what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Well, Peter, it's been, it, I haven't seen you in a, in a while. Nope. Like, it's been uh, quite a bit. Actually, since the documentary, since the round table, right? That is true. Yeah. Correct. So that you guys know that long story short, the documentary is about a man whose dying wish was to perform stand-up comedy. Um, and he asked me to help him. And I assembled um, an amazing group of comedians to help me write jokes for Michael. And he went up and he performed it before he passed. And it was just such a moving experience. It was crazy experience. Yeah, I guess I guess you probably don't have the, uh, you could just describe what it's really about. But it's funny that you just chose that to what? say that that's what it was about. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. it's about, well, it's about life, right? Yes. And uh, relationships. I mean, it's about your relationship and right it's about way more than what you just said that's right. what i think is extremely fascinating about it and also it's something uh for each person that participated and helped it was also something there's a, a lot going on in that right documentary right yeah there's a yeah. lot going on so michael had pls which is very similar to als where he was in a wheelchair Um, And he was getting to the point where he was losing the ability to even move his arms. He was starting to lose his speech and um, he chose death with dignity. So that was a whole nother facet to the documentary and like how we felt about that. And then writing jokes for a man that is suffering and passing away and trying to make that funny. Yeah. I remember when you asked, well, at least when you asked me, and I'm assuming when you asked everybody, uh, the immediate answer I'm assuming was yes. Yeah. Despite the circumstances, you know, right. which were odd, you know, but you're asking comedians to come help somebody in a situation be funny. So I'm assuming everybody you asked said yes. And the first thing I recall is we watched the video cause he couldn't be there. Uh, the, the one I was at. Right. And, uh, I mean, that just blew everybody away. I mean, watching him introduce himself and say what he wanted and say what he expected. Thank you so much for being here and helping me out with Michael. Before we start doing that, just so you guys can get a sense of who Michael is and his comedy sensibility, this is my very first interview with Michael. So let me ask you this. Comedically, what topics are not touchable that are off the table? I cannot think of a topic that's off the table. You just can't offend me. The comedians, I believe, from the get-go, really were impressed with Michael. You know, we and we didn't continually sit around and process, like, how'd that make you feel? Or what do you think about that? But everybody felt a lot, and everybody yeah. thought a lot, and then we tried to, you know, bring that to the situation, whatever that meant to all of us, so... Yeah, like, we all... We all 
react to things based on our life experience, right. like how we were brought up, what we believe, the traumas that we've gone through in life. Um, and so to bring that in, but also try to be funny, empathetic, you know, and then figure out where's the line. Uh, yeah. Also, I mean, I can only speak for myself, but also gift him something. He asked for something right. and you're trying to gift him something. And then I can also only speak for myself, but I'm imagining everybody else also wanting where your friends and you, ask, yeah. you ask us right. and you entrusted all of us. So there was a sense of responsibility. You're not showing up at some bowling alley to tell jokes. <laughs> right. you know, we, everybody cares about you. Right. And if you Thank said you. it was important, then it was important. And then, and then you show up and then you watch him speak and you were like, Oh wow, this is, this is really important. And it, and then there was another part. Uh, it, it's, uh, whatever the unknowing, like uh, you knew was important, but you don't know what, what was going to happen after that either was, um, compelling right. and right. interesting. Yeah. I mean, as comedians, normally what we do is we write jokes for ourselves, or maybe you write jokes for another comedian or a TV show, but you're writing jokes that are uplifting. We're not used to writing jokes necessarily for someone else that is in a dire situation. And, and, so that line of going, okay, he has PLS. How comfortable is he yeah, I remember, talking about all of the things yeah, that come with his asking, disease? And um, yeah, matter of fact, I, I mean, not in a cruel way. That's how a lot of comics cope. I mean, one of the funniest right. things I ever been to in my life, I was a new comedian. I was in Michigan and a very well-respected uh, comedian passed away suddenly. Mm. And we were at his wake and it might be the funniest night of my life. You know, yeah. just people saying like what a regular person would be appalled at someone oh, saying yeah. and it was all said in love and nobody was trying to be mean even though the, it, if you're an outsider it would have sounded mean-spirited right. or cold or gruesome or right. sacrilegious or all those things and it was actually the ultimate in love so um when you said that he said that he was willing to listen to anything and wanted to hear anything yep. that was also interesting as kind of trying to figure out you know what what that Those man without being are, yeah. disrespectful. I, rem I remember thinking though that when you said anything goes, it was like you recorded everything. But I remember thinking like, well, he gets to decide what that is. I mean, right? And and what he decides is really that answer. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It, I I remember being so happy when he said uh, no boundaries. Like I want to joke about every part of this disease, every part of the painful things that people don't know about what it's like to have to get up out of bed with a nurse, what it's like to have to use the bathroom, but being stuck in this wheelchair and my life is limited and I have four children, how it affects them, how it affects my dating life. Like it, it, he wanted to talk about all of it. And it was, it made our job easier because he didn't say, well, don't talk about the fact that I have to wear a diaper or don't talk about the like he was doing shitting himself jokes, <laughs> which yeah, I mean, was but, uh, I mean, fantastic. I mean, you were speaking about specifically about that, but you have a relationship with this person who knows they're going to die. Yes. I mean, we're, we, well, point uh, of the whole situation is where all know we're going to die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we all don't live like that. Mm. Right. And he was. Yes. And he was sharing that with you, whether that was because he wanted to do stand up or whatever, you were a witness to that. I mean, a friend just told me, um, not, I was going to say I'm not trying to be a bummer, but we're talking about someone yeah. who chose to take their life legally. But I had a friend that just, um, got told he had, um, like two months to live and, yeah. um, and, uh, that had not happened to me with one of my friends yet. Mm. And, um, it's, uh, I don't know. There was something also, I'm not the one who got that information, but we spoke at length about it. There was something also very, you besides the you know the i don't know the how intense that is there's also seems something very light and freeing about it uh that that for sure was happening so i spoke freely with my friend about it i'm assuming you spoke freely with michael i i did he about it you know initially he was the he was the one that was super comfortable with it. Mm. I think the other people are the ones that are not comfortable, like me. Like the people he would tell that he's dying, immediately you you, you don't know how to respond to that. You 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 want to hug him. You do I give him empathy? Do I not talk about it? 
you go through the things in your mind of like, what's appropriate? What do they need? How do it's, it's almost like you, you put it on yourself and start judging yourself of how you should treat that person when really you just have mm. to listen to what they want. But yeah. We kind of go, oh, I can't ask them questions or, or I have to be careful about what I say. Well, this, this is or, your podcast and I'm interviewing you, but how would you say you have changed from that moment to now? Probably quite a bit, right? I've, it taught me so yeah. much. Yeah. I mean, I've never watched, witnessed someone die. I've never been faced with the question of death with dignity, whether I would do it, whether how I would feel if my mom wanted to do it, you and know, how, like and how also your opinion doesn't quite really matter. It either. doesn't. But if you're asking someone to be a part of it, it's yeah. just like saying yeah. you're not into yeah. drugs, but will you watch me do drugs yeah. or will yeah. you be a part of it? Yeah. That your, your stuff automatically, your yeah. experiences, your opinions, you, how you would face it. You, I never really, it's not that I didn't think about death. It's just, I never thought if I was suffering to that point and I knew that I would lose my motor skills, that I would be in pain every day. Initially, if you asked me if I would ever take my life, I would say, absolutely not. But now I don't know, like, I, because I'm not in that situation, so easy to say and judge others and go, I would never do that. That's what I mean. I think at the end of the day, that's what you take from the whole, I'm assuming that's a big thing you take from it is you, you don't, it, how do you, you don't know until you, you don't know until you're in it. That's why the whole judgment thing about, uh, women should do this and that with their bodies. People should make this kind of decision. Yeah. Everybody should do this and that. Everybody yeah. should do this and that. Yes. Yeah. we have strong and then opinions. When you're in it, when I watched him, I was like, I get it. I, and that's the whole human experience is having empathy, not judgment towards someone else mm -hmm. going, Oh my goodness. I can't imagine I'm watching it. I still can't imagine what it's like to be you every day. So I have no right to tell you how to handle this. Even if I have different yeah. opinions, I want to just love you through it. I think that's awareness and us getting older. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Just getting more well, mature. Well, it's well, like people complain about getting older. I think one great thing about getting older is yeah. probably empathy. I think that's a, yeah. probably, uh, yeah. I do. I do. I, there's all, there's a bunch of stuff that sucks about getting older and yeah. it's scary about getting older, yeah. but, uh, having empathy and, um, acceptance, yeah. more acceptance over other people. That's probably a nice thing. Yeah. And I would imagine that's probably a bunch of stuff you got from the process. I'm assuming. Yes. It, it was, it, it just grew me up. It, it matured me because how, how you have to deal with such heavy life things and he wasn't a family member, but he became family to me through the process. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying any of this to be yeah. corny and what a gift then. Yeah. What a gift he gives you that, uh, it opened up, it opened up a part of you that yeah. keeps, yeah, no, and yeah. You know, here we are talking about this. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming people listen to this and watch it and uh, you're affecting those people too. Yeah. I, I, I can't believe that, um. You know, I just started this podcast. It's fairly new. And just, I was doing shows in Michigan and this guy came up to me, a man that was going through cancer, um, and saw find the funny, my episode, uh, interview in Grace Fraga and her story of breast cancer. And he just felt so encouraged, laughed, uplifted. And that's what we do. That's what comedians do that we try to get people out of their, their sorrow and the hard things in life. And as well as us coping with our own pain, yeah. we take it on the stage. Well, I started talking about this in my act. Like I even open it with it sometimes. The notion, so uh, it's not a bit. So see if you could follow along and yeah. explain, explain yeah. one part of it to me is, well, first of all, one thing I've never really liked uh, and I used to do it is I, I don't like that everybody is always like, oh, you're a comedian, you're all, you're all fucked up. You know, it's like a thing. You're all uh -huh, fucked up. And, uh -huh. and other comedians say you're all fucked up. Yeah. We're all fucked up, right? Yeah. And then I'm like, well, now that I've lived a little bit, uh, do you like watch the news or go <laughs> or go on the internet? Like everyone's yeah. fucked up. Yeah. Like Everybody. Yes. why do comedians get to own fucked up? Like yeah. school teachers right. and um, doctors and plumbers and athletes and everybody in between is fucked up. Right. So why do comedians, right? So that's the first thing. I'm like, hmm, well, why is it comedians? And then it's like, well, because we talk about it. 
That's the only right? difference, right? But, but not only do we talk about it, here's the thing that's interesting is, um, uh, I'm not saying you have to be mean spirited, but so, but people also, when you talk about it, they don't want to hear you like talk about like your vacation to the Maldives. They want to hear about how you shit your pants on the plane. Oh yeah. On the, yeah. right. right? Yeah. They, they don't want to hear about the beautiful model you dated. They want to hear how the model I dated had a penis. Like yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. That's what's funny. Twice, yeah. twice, by the way. Um, <laughs> Who Love wants me too. shame on you? For, uh, yeah. Uh, but then I'm like, so, okay, so then you have that. They don't, you, what's, what's, the, the good stuff isn't what's funny. It's what's, what the bad, we'll call it bad stuff is what's funny. But then when they're laughing at though, they're not laughing at me or you. Right. Even though me or you might be talking about shitting your pants. That's not what they're laughing at. So what, I'm serious, what are they laughing at that, creates that space for like a joy or enlightenment because they're not laughing at us. No, I think what they're laughing at is relatability. They go, oh my gosh, I remember that one time that I had Taco Bell and I got on a flight and I just couldn't stop with the gas. I was the person on the flight. Right, that's I, what... I, that was me. It's all about like, oh, they're saying my story, but I don't want to tell my story of embarrassment. I'll let them do it. And that, that laugh is like, yes, I felt that. Right. I know what it's that's what's like. It's relatable. That's it's how you relatable. find the funny. Right. Yeah. I mean, I just think that's interesting. I mean, most of the time they're definitely when they're laughing and you're laughing about and they're laughing about something like that. It's not because they're laughing at you. That's for sure. No. No, they're. Yeah. And they're not necessarily also laughing with you either. It's some little space right in between there that right. makes them. Right. Feel however they feel. Right. And that's when you get those pops in the audience of someone like really exploding with laughter, you know, that's because they just went through it or their husband just went through it, or they, they feel this like, oh, now we're bonded because we're, we're on the same team. I, I feel that way about that thing too, or that happened to me. Well, I've, I've been taking that notion a step further when I'm on stage and like recently one time, and I'm kind of speak in this place on stage and I'm, I'm only speaking for myself and it, I'm not trying to be like mm -hmm. grandiose. It's just yeah. like what I'm trying to do, but I've asked the crowd partway through my show, I go, how are you guys doing, right? And and before I can even finish the sentence several times, they all start clapping, like like comedy club clapping, right? And then I go, no, 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 I, oh, I didn't mean like that. I meant like, how are you really doing, uh, right? Yeah. And then like every time, like 95% of them go, eh, not that. Oh, yeah. wow. And it's like, yeah. well, yeah. Three seconds ago, everybody in here was doing great. Yeah. And then when I go, no, no, no. For real. How are you really doing? Like 95% of them aren't doing that great. And and I'm not trying to like make everybody bummed at a show, but that that's what I want to talk to. Right. And I don't even right. want to necessarily do my act differently. Yeah. I just want to speak to that. We, we all don't have to be full of shit and yeah. act like everything's okay. Like yeah. a second ago, you guys were all in on, we're Clapping. just going to act like it's okay. Right. And it's not okay. People are are suffering spiritually or emotionally or financially physically. or yep. physically or whatever. And- you were just saying what people find funny is the commonality of that thing. Right. And it's like, I just think for me, calling some attention to there's some commonality here that everybody's not doing that great. And that's yeah. okay. Yeah. It's okay. We don't even have to yeah. get into it. How about we just start right there? Right. Which is not where we started show. Right. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Come yeah, on, yeah, you yeah, can yeah, do yeah. better than that. How's everybody <laughs> doing? Which I actually feel like now that I'm, I don't know, look at things differently. I feel like some people are like, are like, well, I'm not doing great. And everybody in here just said they're doing great. So me not doing great is even worse than it was a second ago. And I just <laughs> think like a lot of us aren't doing that great. I mean, yeah. just in that moment. I think as you mature as a comedian and a person, your material becomes more you, more, um, at least I hope, my material, I feel like has become a little more vulnerable. So, so am I, my, yeah. me going on stage now, it means more to me now than it ever did. Do you remember when we were trying to come up with an opener for Michael? Because yeah, I, if I remember correctly, I believe I said something super inappropriate. Yeah, uh, which I love. Now, and because uh, <laughs> most people knew him, so it wasn't going to work. But I believe I had him like mumbling and slurring and saying something, <laughs> saying something like That's that. That's just the thing. It's like, it, and Michael was totally cool yeah. with 
everything yeah. that we came up with. Yeah. He just picked what his favorites were. Yeah. And his set was about 15 minutes, which is a long time for a new comedian, yeah. especially someone that's never done it. Yeah. But then you have these like 10 comics that came in and wrote, I'm talking comics that have Emmys, specials, Tonight Show sets, like that we're established comedians. So we're giving him our best material for him that we wrote. So he had just gems to yeah, pick Yeah, you from. acquired, uh, you you gathered up quite a list of people to quite write. Quite an so. army yeah. of fantastic, com and, and comics from every different walk of life. Mm -hmm. I wanted men, women, different ethnicities, different experiences in life, and different levels of comedy, too, different yeah. styles. Yeah, and then and he so, chose what spoke to him. Yeah, he did. Um, this is a joke that uh, we wrote as his opener, and this is one from Dana Eagle started uh, a joke talking about what his final wish would be, and we were going to have this be one of his openers. I think yours was the second joke. It was the second joke? Why wasn't it the first joke? Hmm. Uh, oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank yeah. you for coming out tonight. Which I think is a really good angle. So Dana Eagle wrote, thank you for coming out tonight, and thank you to Lisa for helping my wish come true. Oh, my second wish. Yeah. And that could either imply sex with Lisa, or it can imply I want a cure. It oh, goes no, both no. ways. This is sex with Lisa. No, it's a guy. It was yeah. not a cure. <laughs> <laughs> That's the tag, is that Lisa thought the first wish was a cure. Yeah. No. That's like fourth. <laughs> yeah. That's like fourth on the list. Oh man, I just love watching. Yeah, yes. I mean, I, I hope uh, I hope everybody gets to see this somehow. I know, I really do. I hope everybody I'm, gets I'm to see it. I'm working on it. And pretty awesome for you. I mean, like, um, I must, you, you know, all these people that you like and that you respected, and you could just see how um, we all uh, dealt with a lot of different things, like the, the yeah. subject matter, uh, being generous of spirit and also how everybody worked as comedians. I mean, that must've been yeah. while the whole purpose was going on. It must've been pretty awesome. It was, it was a range of emotions, the stress level though. And what, because you wanted to do to everybody justice. Yeah. Him and yeah. 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 Like yeah. this, the, this is this guy's final wish. You know what I mean? It's in, and I'm get assembling all these people that I'm asking favors. Nobody got paid. I didn't get paid. Sarah, the editor, didn't get this. Was just all everybody out of their own generosity to want to help another human. So to make it uh, like a great um, environment for the comics, we were comfortable to get Michael there from San Diego. You know, when it's really hard for him to sit in a car for two, three hours at a time, it hurts his legs, yeah, his isn't, body. Isn't it funny the uh, stuff we? Um, I'm, I'm just telling you as an outsider. Uh, if you were like, uh, are you at all concerned with how Lisa would treat you doing this thing? Yeah. Not at all. Right. Uh, if you, are you, uh, at all concerned how what, well she would make you look or not look? Not at all. Are you concerned that she might, uh, not do a nice job and do this person service? Not at all. And it's funny. Those are all your considerations that I guarantee you everybody that participated wasn't, wasn't even no. thinking. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah. I just think that's funny because that, yeah. those are not any, anything that anybody involved was Right. concerned with and yeah, big concerns I, of yours. I, I just wanted everybody to be comfortable and to like, to not have to put too much of their day on the table, you know, because we all have jobs, we have kids and families and responsibilities. And, and I wanted to make sure that Michael was comfortable and he wasn't offended by anything. Cause it's different when be people go, Oh, anything goes. And then you do it. And then people are pissed off. It's just yeah. like in audiences did nowadays. You, did you, I mean, you don't have to, I mean, I'm not even asking you to name names, but did you, were you able to discern the level of like, um, I don't know, not, not comedy, but the generosity of spirit from people for whatever reason, like their comfort level, were you able to, were, yes. you, were you surprised by that with certain people? I think everybody was at a different comfort level with what they were writing for a man that's just about to pass and that is suffering. So like, I think Brian Kiley was a little less comfortable talking about, um, like just really didn't want to offend him because like I said, people will, um, go, yeah, anything goes, but then you say something and then all of a sudden it affects their heart. And I was really concerned with that too, but he likes my comedy and I'm pretty dark. So well, <laughs> I no, was like, I, if you're how, liking this sensibility, how about, how about a random groups of comedians who are tasked to write together? 
that's a whole nother thing that people don't even understand right. what the comfort level is and right. with with people saying things right amongst their peers right. exactly for not not sitting around talking drinking having coffee goofing around right. but for a purpose right that's a whole nother element that right yeah I, I well you can't make people think things when they watch this but it would be it would be uh, there's, like I said, there's a lot going on. So it'd be very it's so interesting deep. if people take the time to appreciate all the different things the, that are going on. All the different on. nuances. Yeah. I mean, uh, just even even how we were writing together, a lot of the jokes were started off as one idea. And then it was fantastic to watch the comedians tag it, switch it, just add their own little or, take on or it. Or why, if somebody says something and nobody laughs, that also doesn't even mean it wasn't funny. That might be oh, yeah. like, oh yeah, cool. I yeah. get that. And then- Yeah, and that's then, what comedians right. are like. And, They're and, like, and oh, they that's all brilliant. laugh and that may, might all laugh because there's no way you would ever do that or that's <laughs> a, So yeah. also how, how everybody works, you know, you just yeah. played a clip and there's a lot of like nodding and that's- That's that's, that's normal. People, that's <laughs> normal. That's comics, normal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're yeah. killing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's it, I, I actually hate that part about comedians because I tend to be a big laugher. Like if you watch the round table, I'm laughing through the whole thing, but I'm a different kind of comedian. Like I know Alonzo uh, is normally like, yeah, oh, that's good. <laughs> and that's and that's someone killing for Alonzo to go. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah. Oh, I like that one. Oh. Leo did that joke about uh, I have PLS and, um, you know, it's I can't even get the cool disease. Is there something about, because everybody knows about ALS, you know, there's some funds that are That's not. That's hilarious yeah. that He's you're like, dying of the less known disease. Right, right. Because like ALS <laughs> like is like luck, Stephen Hawking. Your luck isn't bad enough. Like you didn't even get the good <laughs> right, disease. Right, right, right. PLS. You get the one that nobody knows right, about. Right. Less commonly known as Steve Gehrig's disease. Yeah. Who worked at a gas station? I was just going to say, yeah, yeah, he's not even in the league yeah. playing ball. Yeah, I couldn't get ALS. That's the big one. You gotta know somebody to get ALS. Yeah. <laughs> <That's hilarious. laughs> That's what I mean. Everybody's different yeah. people. Yes. Yeah. Well, you're laughing and having a good time. Yeah. Well, not laughing doesn't mean you're not having a good time either. You just right. focus just, on the task we're, we're differently. Just, we're just looking at the joke like, oh, that was yeah. good. That so was I, I think that's an interesting <laughs> element of watching everybody work together. Right, exactly. So we're all taking these premises and someone will write a joke and then we're just adding and tweaking and taking things away and then going, oh, this perspective. Um, there's a, there's a part about stand-up comedy and even in this, Michael was being self-deprecating. Most comedians do a couple jokes that, that, that kind of cut them down and make them a little more relatable to the audience, um, myself included, but I wanted a joke, at least one where Michael wins mm -hmm. and, um, we're going to play this one right here. Michael was really uncomfortable to do this. Mm -hmm. initially until he understood and I tried to explain to him, you need to win in some of this. And you've probably been mistreated being in a wheelchair at some point. So this is a joke that I wrote with Brian Kiley, where it started off with he's he, because I'm saying his comfort level, he's not like a, that edgy of a comedian. He's pretty clean. So when he wrote something saying, well, don't you have to be able to stand up to stand up? And I go, well, he's got to have a biting response because that was mean what she said. And for him to just take that being in a wheelchair, people think he's weak. So yeah. Yeah. he's got to come back and win. And as we went, he got more and more comfortable with it. So this is us practicing the joke. Nice. I want you to try, cause I know you got to go. Can you try that one joke that we redid for you? It's going to work. I promise you. Plus, you have to win in one of these jokes. All of these other jokes, most of them are self-deprecating. This one, you win. I told my neighbor I wanted to do stand-up comedy. Yep. She said, don't you have to be able to stand up to do stand-up? I said, don't you have to be on your period to be a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I nailed it! That was so good. It gets me every time. Every time. On stage. Yeah, me every okay. time. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing is he was afraid to say something mean about a woman. And I go, woman, man, child, whoever, they have the capability to be really mean. And you're just leveling the field, you know? Uh, you're not calling her a bitch because she's just walking down the hallway. You're calling her a bitch because of how she's treating you. And it's really even just 
calling the behavior bitchy. Did he you know? explain to you why he picked the ones he picked? And did you have much to say about it? Like you said, you you told him he needs to win in that one. But did he did he explain to you why he picked what he picked? He just picked the ones basically that resonated the most mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. And if he felt uncomfortable with anything, he didn't obviously do those. Um, and the other one... When they talk about these guys in prison picking their last meal, which, yeah. by the way, I don't know if I could ever do. Like, I don't... I, I'm not good with your favorite this or your favorite that. But he's literally picking... All he wants to do is stand up. And he's picking all these jokes for a reason. How fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. How fascinating. Yeah, because there were a couple... You know what I mean? I think How that he was like, I didn't... fascinating. He didn't relate to as well. And and that's a part of it. It's not that they weren't funny. It's just he didn't feel it. It wasn't resonating with him, you know? You encouraged him a little bit on some of, like, the ones about the winning. Which yeah. Was well, with this one in particular is one of the ones that he had the hardest time with. So this is Michael actually performing the joke. And even in the joke, he's unsure of it on stage, how sometimes we are with a new joke. And then when he sees it work, you should see the look on his face of like, oh my gosh, she was right. And that's where he needs to trust our level of skill. Actually, let's show him doing it in his set. <laughs> I told my neighbor I wanted to do stand-up comedy. She said, don't you have to be able to stand up to do stand-up? I said, don't you have to be on your period to be a bitch? <laughs> the crowd goes nuts. Look at how happy they are that he won. <laughs> Look at his face. He's in shock. This Hold, is how, hang on one second. Yeah, go ahead. Just uh, because what I'm trying to do nowadays, I'm trying to um, honor what I'm thinking and feeling. Yeah. Again, I'm not trying to be corny, but um, yeah. What a what a nice. <laughs> What a nice vibe this podcast and oh. and uh, and uh, <laughs> that's the, why I love theater. Then the and the documentary really like I mean just be just and dude I'm not like this all the time but we just all be way more empathetic. Yes, way more empathetic. Yeah, to ourselves and yeah. uh, and to other people. Yeah. So anyway, that's no, how I that's feel beautiful. right now. Right now, yeah. talking to you, watching this. You guys, sometimes I don't know if I'm going to enjoy my guest as much as I did. Mm. But this is going to be a two-parter because Peter is so awesome and we need to hear more of his wisdom. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, just the way that you deal with life, your perspectives, it's so much deeper than the normal uh -oh. friendships that I have and, and with comedians. Ah. Because a lot of us are um, a little bit afraid and kind of guarded and sometimes we just lead with the comedy but it's the opposite with peter like we you and i we lead with depth and like all these layers and then sometimes there's comedy in it okay but i love our relationship and i love him as a comic he's so gifted um please go see his stuff where are you going to be in vegas soon i'm going to be in vegas the last couple days of may the beginning of june at the oyo o y o casino it's behind the tropicana awesome and uh this and that yeah yeah peter's everywhere definitely check out his stuff and we will see you again in two weeks because he's awesome i hope everybody listens to my daughter and see it and Laughing with her because she is very funny. <laughs>